All right, we're changing, uh, starting the next series where I'm gonna fill this up with refrigerant. Now remember, this is a vintage air system that has been exposed to the atmosphere for a long time. And we know I can't get all the moisture out. I'm about to fill it. I have the high side open, the low side closed. I have the vacuum open right now. We're still pulling the vacuum. I have the refrigerant off. It's stabilized. I zeroed it out. Let's make sure it's reading. We are reading. That's the weight of this. So we are reading. We're down to 163 microns. Well, the vacuum pump is on. It jumps up to 1400 uh, when doing the decay test. And that's just telling me there's a lot of moisture inside the system. It's not the worst case scenario. It would be like 3000 or above if there's really a lot of moisture in the system. It's still considered a lot. Uh, in commercial refrigeration, that would be a failure. You might even get ice building up on your expansion valve on the inside, blocking your refrigerant flow on low temperature refrigeration. We're at comfort level, high temperature air conditioning for comfort, so that's a different story. But you still make acids in the oil and break down the ester oil, the POE oil that's inside the system. So let's jump. Uh, the original vintage air system calls for 1.5 pounds. I'm using pounds because this is what they use on the vintage air systems. But he had to make a custom condenser and they chopped off the top and they took out about this much of the condenser. And we all know that's bad. Uh, it welded it. I test, test pressured it, uh, nitrogen pressure decay test and they did a good job. It didn't leak. So we're going to put 1.5 pounds. I'm not going to put in 1.8 pounds. I'm going to put in 1.5 pounds because of how much condenser. Oh, and a worse thing they did. Oh, shit. Uh, worst thing they even did. Uh, you can see it jump up a little bit for there for a second. Um, what was the worst thing? Now that I got distracted from stepping on my plug. Uh, oh, they inverted the lines from the high side. They got the condenser upside down and wants me to do it anyway. But we all know the vapor is supposed to go in at the top and the liquid is supposed to come out on the bottom. And this is going backwards. So we're going to see what the outcome of that is. So not only do we have a smaller condenser, we have it upside down inverted. Um, let's fill it up and see what happens. Oh. And I can't get a hold of any of the metal lines anywhere for me to take proper tests. So we're just taking tests for fun. Uh, we're going to see what the discharge temperature of the compressor is. And I only can take temperature here because there's no metal lines exposed anywhere for me to get a hold of to take any proper temperatures. So let's cut off the vacuum. Oh, or we just timed out on the thing. That was like the third time. Okay, so let's turn off the vacuum. Okay, the vacuum is off. Now, we're going to open up the refrigerant and we're going to count up 1.5 pounds. So let's, uh, I got the refrigerant bottle. It's upside down. It's resting at ease. I already measured. I already weighed. I made sure it goes back to zero. So let's put in some refrigerant. One, two, three, go. So now we're putting refrigerant into the system and we're looking for 1.5 pounds and it's going in through the high side only, not the low side. There's one pound coming up, one pound. 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 1.3, 1 1.4, and I'm just gonna do a little, little bumps out there, 1.5. I'm gonna leave it right there because remember, this condenser is upside down and they took off about three inches off of the condenser, which is really bad. I'm afraid of what they did. Um, so we have an undersized condenser on the system and it's a micro channel parallel flow condenser that has a very extremely small internal volume. So that's really gonna mess everything up. So now we're gonna start up the 700 horsepower motor and uh, kill ourselves with carbon monoxide inside this garage. So I'll come back after this started. I'm gonna put up the temperature probes out the dash and we'll see if we could finish this test before I die of carbon monoxide poisoning.